Okay, hello everybody. So I've done double checking and I did find one thing that I had gotten wrong. You can't see it now, but inside here there was a, I had a 0 0.01 capacitor on the bright cap for uh, the, uh, the JCM 800 channel. And that was wrong. It's 0 0.001. I happen to have one around, so I threw that one in, but everything else checked out and looks good. So here goes the first power on. Uh, I'm just going to grab, actually, I probably do need a power cord to do that. Let me grab a power cord really quickly. I know I've got one sitting here somewhere. There we go. So I also am going to have to buy a fuse for the uh, HT because it's supposed to be a half amp and I only have a one amp fuse, but that's, uh, you know, right now I know of no problems with this amp, so I will just be quickly powering it on, testing and make sure it's working. I highly advise you do not do something like this because, you know, you could blow up your amp. So uh, let me put this guy, if I can find it. I can't see the angle I'm at. There we go. All right. So I've got power plugged in, but we don't have a light yet because I haven't flipped the switch. You're going to be able to see the voltage right here. Here it goes. Now the LED did not show up, and I heard a little noise, then it immediately stopped. And I've got no voltage there. So that, to me, may indicate I've already blown a fuse, but I'm not sure. All right, so what we're going to try and do is check if the, if we have 120 volts. Well, I guess I'll have to check the fuse. Well, let me, let me come back. It just, it may have been that the fuse is already dead, but I don't know uh, because I gutted this amp and things had gone bad. I may not have ever had voltages there, but we'll see. So I'll come back after the cut and we'll see what happened. All right, we're gonna do another attempt at this. Hopefully it won't blow the fuse immediately. Um, but um, uh, as I said, it may very well have been that the fuse was already pretty much hosed if not blown because I had had a fairly catastrophic failure on the old amp. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and give this a try right here and see what happens. Uh, except I need to plug the cord back into it again, I think that might help. All right, here we go. All right, we have power. Here we go. Oh, we, we are blowing a fuse almost instantly again because it started going up and then immediately I heard a popping noise like it was doing something and then immediately shutting back off again. Okay, so um, something is drawing heavy current. I'm not sure what. So at this point, I'm going to do a little bit of troubleshooting and come back. We're going to test all of my power rails and make sure I don't have any kind of reference to ground with them. I have a decent amount of reference to ground. I will I will show now, if I put this on continuity mode, we have about 70 ohms from here to ground, but that's because this has a route to ground through um, the center tap of the transformer. So um, basically, the this is about 70 ohms that should go, this is the, well, sorry, this is the center tap that connects to the uh, power or the uh, the output transformer, but the, the 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 ground here is the center tap of this winding of the power transformer. So the power transformer, if I touch here, I have about 28 volt uh, or ohms resistance there, and about 27 there, and they add up to about 50 some odd, which is you know about right. So that's that's to be expected. But a part I'm, the part I'm kind of confused about though really is this one because I just was hearing a bit of I was getting a fairly low resistance from here. It's saying 72 ohms but that goes from here through here into the choke and then over to here and I have you know I should have very little yeah I'm seeing nothing here like very very okay so I, I somehow is it my I wonder if it's my output transformer itself because that does connect right here. That's the center tap of the output transformer, which is also supposed to connect into your A point here. Uh, and that is then what sends power to the screens through the two leads. If I was to connect, so this is roughly saying though that I have from here to earth, 72 ohms of resistance and I shouldn't. Um, so let's check. If I touch here, oh, this is one of the transformer leads. I've got 90 ohms of resistance to ground. And I touch the other transformer lead, I have 55. So something 
definitely odd. So what I think I might do is desolder this one, pull it away, and see if my resistance to ground is still really low. If it isn't, then there's something wrong, and maybe even my output transformer has gone bad. And this was one of my fears that I had from the original amp when I bought it. This was an old Vox AC100 CPH. Uh, but we're going to give it a try. Uh, I want to desolder that and see. So let me just make sure I don't have any voltage going. I shouldn't, but... Um, Yeah, I'm showing no volts. Uh, let me do DC. Yeah, so it's it's blowing the fuse instantly. We'll look at this fuse again, but I'll be willing to bet it's also blown. Yeah, it blew. Nothing in there. Um, so it's sending three amps instantly to ground somewhere, possibly in a shorted winding of the output transformer. I don't know yet at this point, so I will have to take a look at that. Um, so, I will come back after the cut, I'm going to desolder this guy, I'll check it, and I'll give you guys some info on what I find. Alright, so I figured out what it is, it's one of the tubes that I had here. Now, it may have been, I got a bunch of tubes from a, a vendor that I will not name, that I very, very passionately hate because of this same kind of problem happened with another tube I got from them, but I'll leave it alone at this point, other than to say, the tube, when it's in, will show resistance nearly, see right now if you look, I have resistance of infinite, you know, open ohm line off of that and I, I resoldered this because when I was touching it it definitely showed low resistance on the output transformer so I thought well maybe it's that but I thought well I'm going to pull all the tubes and retest it I pulled all the tubes and now all of a sudden I wasn't open to ground anymore so I've plugged two tubes in only after testing around playing these two are not showing it I don't know if I super feel comfortable with these tubes anyway they may be all shot but at this point I know these two don't seem to be showing ground to the to them so I've placed them in this socket and this socket. The outer ones aren't in use. And you, when you're doing pairs, you have to be careful of that. Um, as you'll notice, my red line goes between these two, and then my white or brown line goes between these two. You always have to have one of e either side of that transformer, a tube in one or the other. But you can't. So if I was to put two in these two, I'd blow up my transformer. Not Well, not blow it up, but it wouldn't be happy. It might die. But at this point now, I'm going to go ahead and give it a try again. Uh, and we will see what we get. Um, I've got a new fuse in again. Uh, and I only have about one more try on fuses, but uh, I think that is the pro cause of the problem here. All right, so we're going to power up again, and I don't, I can't seem to find my clip for this, so I will kind of carefully set it on there. Oh, let me get this up where you guys will be able to see it again. That's kind of being hit by the light a little too much. All right. That should be pretty visible. And we're going to turn it on again. Uh, oh, I've got to be on voltage. My LED light's not turning on. And I'm showing uh, 7 volts, 7 millivolts. So I might have blown a fuse again. Uh, all right, well, let me see here uh, what I've got. Do I have 120 volts here? I do not. That's DC Phil. Yeah, so I think I've blown a fuse again. So something, I might have to order some new tubes and give this a try at that point because we'll just double check here that I have 120 volts. I uh, can't see it now, of course. I can't get those in enough to see. These ones should do it for me. And we will double check that I have 120 volts coming in from here, which I should. Yep, I've got a good 118, 117 and a half. So the problem is something is definitely wrong. Uh, but right now, as I'd said, when I was you know testing for uh, my ground here, if I go back to continuity mode and I touch a, an earth reference thing, I get reference, same here. But here, I'm now showing open. So I definitely have not got something bad that I can see. But I blew a fuse again immediately. So my major concern here is just that my fuses themselves 
I mean, my tubes themselves are garbage. Uh, and and it did have I did have something go wrong on that amp, so maybe I should just stop before I end up risking damaging anything else. So I will have to order some new tubes. I'm gonna have to get myself some more fuses. I have one left, but I'd rather not risk it at this point. So we'll wait and see on that. But um, and we're gonna go from there. So, all right, cheers, everybody. Sorry, the fun continues. Well, it looks like we have a failure. So I finally figured out what was going wrong there, and it's that I was actually doing the wrong thing. The I reverted this back to the rectification like it was supposed to be, which is just a full wave rectifier, not a full wave bridge rectifier. Uh, and then I re put it back to basically the stock way Slucky's work was done. And that's what I was doing wrong. And I also could have, in theory, damaged some of the things in the process because I was putting like probably closer to 700 volts instead of 500 volts into the system. Um, so I got that sorted out and Slucky basically said to give it a try again and see what you get. There's no, no way of knowing. Well, the caps charged up fine, but within a few seconds, of, and, I, and I apologize, I forgot to actually hit record on the video, but basically I powered it back on again and I heard some nice loud popping, smoking, and saw glowing from under here in this first tube. Now this was a problem that I actually had happen repeatedly on the other amp was somehow or another, I think the power transformer has a short between the heaters and the high voltage. Because several times in my process, I thought it was something I was doing wrong. The um, heaters would short out and burn up the one ohm or the, the, the 100 ohm, like one watt resistors I had to ground. And it just happened again. I can't see it. I can't get to it. But at this point, um, I I basically may have to call this defeat on this, this amp. This chassis is like cursed or the transformers are cursed. Now, for me, the cost is becoming prohibitive. I don't really know that I want to spend and buy another power transformer and then buy and potentially replace the output transformer. I also heard many bad things about these boxes that had fairly mediocre quality transformers that this is a common problem. I think I've got a shorted winding on the power transformer between the, the heaters and the main voltage because I've burned up power tubes before and then it worked again for a while and then it happened again. So rather than risk me blowing out more tubes, the power tubes are expensive and I've destroyed them several times. Uh, I will say at this point, I think sometimes you have to just say good enough. I'm done. Uh, this this particular amp has beat me. It's not the the built-in part, but everything else. It's just you know, for from here, uh, I don't want to build anything in this chassis because the transformers I think are just absolute garbage. So, sadly, I got it done, <laughs> and it's not going to work. So, I, I I welcome any kind of comments or suggestions in the in the in the links below, but, uh, you know, I think really this is just a, sometimes it's better to cut your losses and walk away. Um, this is my, my first, my, my second ever amp I tried to repair was the first original Vox AC 100 CPH that was in this. And I tried and tried and I kept burning up things and it kept doing things that wasn't supposed to. And everybody was telling me don't work on them. They're garbage. So I just gave up at that point, re just gutted everything and rebuilt it as a Vox AC 100 slash two from back in the sixties or so that worked for a while, but had a lot of really erratic behavior and problems. Then I burned up everything again so I set it aside for a good year or so while building other things I got my building skill up I thought oh this is going great and then uh, I decide I'm going to come back got that old AC100 and I'll just try and build this dual marshal in here and see what happens and I guess this is what happens so uh, sadly it looks like everything's ready the boards are good you know I, I just don't know that I want to at this point mess with trying to I'd have to basically drop the power transformer and put a new power transformer in it uh, and it's not worth me risking paying a couple you know, 100-ish, 150-ish dollars for a power transformer. I don't know if I trust these power tubes anymore. I will have to remove this board completely, which means desoldering every single one of those wired connections that I put on there and potentially others just to get down to replace those um, grounded um, resistors. I will probably replace those over here somewhere if I did do it because, you know, there's no point in me fighting that battle under here in the future if that's the problem. Because so, everything else on the board seems fine. I just smoked out those two resistors down here and they're they're going to be completely pointless now, uh, which means I have a floating uh, power supply for the um, uh, heaters, which is not good. And I think, I think that's the, the core of the problem. I really can't imagine there being any other reason why this would keep happening uh, other than there's something shorting between those two. So, well, there you have it, guys. Uh, I apologize. I didn't get something out of it, but, uh, you know, sometimes, you, you know, the, the term I've heard before was beyond economical repair. At this point, I've spent so much trying to repair this. It's not worth it for me to make this into a working amp. Uh, unless for some reason I, I don't know, we'll see. Maybe a few months down the road, I'll decide it's worth trying to spend 150 or so bucks on a, on a, a Plexi power transformer. So, all right, guys, cheers. If you've liked the video series, please do give me a thumbs up. Uh, give me some comments below uh, and we'll talk to you later. Cheers.